Welcome to the Nicholas 11 X12 technology. Today we're looking at the Thermaltake Freo Extreme Aftermarket CPU Cooler. This cooler is aimed towards the enthusiasts and should offer great cooling performance. Here's the box and it's surprisingly small for this type of huge CPU cooler. Again we're looking at the Thermaltake Freo Extreme CPU Cooler and it should apparently allow you to break the limit in terms of overclocking. There even is a nice picture of the cooler itself on a box. It should come with two 14cm fans, it should have 6 heat pipes and also supports the Intel LG2011 socket but we'll get to the socket compatibility in a moment. It also comes with a neat controller here, switchable for PWM and VR function. That sounds interesting. Apparently it should be able to cool CPUs down up to a TDP of 250 watts, that's a lot. On the side you get detailed features on the cooler and its accessories, good to know. And on the back of the box you get more details on the features as well as a complete specification table. So yeah, the box itself doesn't look bad at all in my opinion, if that matters of course. But now let's open this box up, that's what's inside. Here's the Thermaltake warranty information. Here are the installation instructions for this CPU cooler and make sure you read that because going through the installation without reading it can be quite difficult. Also note that there are two different instructions, one for Intel and the other one for AMD. And here's the PWM and VR function controller, that's very interesting. With this unit you can basically control your fan speeds and therefore the sound level. The idea is pretty good but the unit itself is fairly big and to be honest this wouldn't look all that good in your case, especially if you're an enthusiast if you know what I mean. Hiding this thing can be quite difficult, especially if you'd like to access it again. But on the other hand you could just get yourself a Y fan connector and therefore your motherboard will do the job for you. Then here's the cable for the PWM and VR function controller. To be honest I'm a little disappointed here, the cables are not sleeved and are not even black. You know at this price point I would have expected that. Alright these are the standard metal fan clips to attach the fans onto the heatsink. In this form is the CPU cooler protected. When I take one cover off you can access the included fans and the accessories. Now when looking at the heatsink alone it makes a pretty good impression, it seems to be very durable and some parts are really thick. I like it that Thermaltake even put their logo here, according to the look of this unit it should perform very nicely and somehow the heatsink construction alone reminds me of a Noctua cooler. You see the quality is pretty good, everything is making good contact. Here are the heat pipes that go into the base, and that one the base is very reflective as you can see. Here are the two fans that are included. These are 140mm fans from a Thermaltake and the design is kinda unique but the design doesn't look bad at all. 4 pin fan connectors are used and the cables itself are not black at all and aren't even sleeved. That's definitely a drawback when it comes down to the looks especially for the enthusiast like I am. Now to the last thing, the accessory package. The box looks quite interesting I have to admit, when I open it up right on top is a backplate. It looks fairly standard and what I like is that this one backplate is for both Intel and AMD systems, just turn it around and you're good to go. But then there are also the bad thing about this plate, it's not made out of metal, no instead it's very hard plastic. So the quality may not be that bad but you know it's plastic and the weight of the cooler is not the lightest, so I'm actually a little disappointed here. And the rest is in there, like the screws, brackets and even the thermal paste. So here's the cooler with the fans attached to the heatsink with the fan clips. The installation was fairly basic but sometimes it can be tricky. The size is enormous and I really have to admit it looks very mighty. Thermaltake included two fans but if you'd like you could also add another fan right there. But if you'd really decide to do that you would need two additional fan clips and a matching fan. In terms of beauty, well this can be quite difficult, maybe it would be even easier replacing all the fans then. I really hope this cooler performs good because it's really heavy and after long term usage the motherboard can get bent a little, so let's hope this pays off. But now let's get to the specifications. The Thermaltake Freo Extreme has aluminum fans and uses an aluminum and copper base. It has 6 6mm heat pipes, two 140mm fans already come included and the cooler weighs 1.23 kilograms and these are 2.71 pounds. The dimensions are 148.2 by 151 by 160 millimeters. These are 5.83 by 5.94 by 6.3 inches. This CPU cooler supports the following sockets at the time of this video. Intel LJ2011, LJ1366, LJ1155 and 1156, AMD AM3 Plus slash AM3, AM2 Plus slash AM2 and lastly FM1. 
Good, and here's the cooler installed into my system. Right off the bat, I can tell you it looks pretty cool. The towers make the cooler look really strong. The two fans pull cool air through that way, and in my case, the rear fan exhausts the warm air. But unfortunately, I encountered a problem with the memory fitting. The fan on the right covers up all the RAM slots basically, and therefore you could pretty much say goodbye to your high profile memory. But not only high profile memory was a problem. I used some Kingston value RAM here, these are low profile dims, and to be honest, I had to set up the fan a little bit higher because it was even interfering with this low profile memory. So I don't know what Thermaltic thought of that, but that's really disappointing. But yeah, if you really want, there is an option and that would be mounting the right fan onto the left tower, not the way Thermaltake wants it to be. Alright, but now let's take a look at the temperature results. But before I can show you that, here's my test system. As you can see, I'll be cooling down the Intel Core i7-3770K CPU that is running at stock speeds, so nothing is overclocked. But yeah, here are the results. The Thermaltake Freeo Extreme Air CPU cooler is a pretty good choice but definitely not the best one. The cooling performance is pretty good, I have nothing to complain there, but it's not really worth it for the price you're paying. Also the weight is fairly high too and this could eventually bend the motherboard a little over long term usage. The design of this unit is of course not the best but I have to admit it looks pretty cool in the system. Unfortunately it will interfere with basically every single memory kit, unless you don't set the fan up higher or mount the fan onto the other side. Of course this is not how Thermaltic wants you to use it, but at least you can install memory again. Pros are good cooling performance and the mighty design. Unfortunately this unit has more cons than pros. For example it doesn't have the best price performance ratio, it's fairly heavy and one fan will definitely interfere with memory even with low profile RAM and last but not least I don't like it that Thermaltic wants you to use a plastic backplate, I would have liked to see a nice metal backplate. And that's why I have to give this cooler a 6 out of 10, but still, only because of the cooling performance, I still recommend it. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.